In this video, we will improve an e-commerce mobile app design by enhancing the user experience, streamlining the interface and making it more visually appealing. Let's start with the first screen, which is dedicated to welcoming users to the app. Primary change is around the behavior. At the first screen, user is required to take an action to go to the next step. But my question here is, should we require a confirmation of intent from a person that just installed this app for that exact reason? Idea behind the updated screen is that it would be shown after opening of the app and automatically switch to the home screen after everything is loaded. No need to confirm anything. As I explained in the previous videos from this series, whenever you are working on a project to your portfolio, try to make your designs as they were real. Lorem Ipsum filler is a dead giveaway that the designs fail. Apart from that, there are some stylistical changes like expansion of the background to the edges, adjustment to the circular pattern around the photo, and change to logo color and size that aim to make the screen more visually appealing. Let's move to the next screen. Judging from the navigation at the bottom, we can assume that we are watching the home screen, but we don't see basic elements that we should expect from e-commerce app like this. We don't see any categories and there is no clear way to navigate to them. Based on that, the only viable way for a user to browse their offer is to use the search option at the top side of the screen. Then we have a title and a filtering icon which are more appropriate for a category page. To fix that, the first thing I did was to create a proper home page with the introduction of categories and secondary navigation which would host them. Apart from that, I made clear distinct sections that allowed me to structurize the store offer better. Second thing I did was to introduce a new category screen to the project. With that, potential user could navigate through the app and view the store offer properly. Now, let's focus on the changes to UI elements. First thing you probably notice is the bottom navigation. That do poor contrast and size of the icons is really hard to read. Also, we have icons that indicate some sort of settings and user profile. Why not to simplify the navigation by moving the settings to the user profile, since those options are typically related. That allowed me to slightly increase the size and thickness of the icons. And because of that, the whole navigation is much more user-friendly. Now, what I'm typically recommending for all of my students to do whenever they are not sure about sizes, distances, or general feel of the design is to preview it on a dedicated device. It will allow you to spot the most crucial issues with the UI design right away. Like in this case, poor visibility of the product ratings, navigation icons, and misalignment of them. Also, this weird positioning of the title at the top. If you don't have that option, try to use built-in prototyping capabilities of your design tool in a form of a device frame or mockup. For example, in Figma, you can simulate device type when previewing your prototype, which will give you a good idea on how it will behave in reality. But let us go back to the comparison. Next thing I did was a change to the item cards. In the original design, a big portion of the card is reserved for the circle, which doesn't provide any value and distract users from the product photo. So I disassembled the card into two pieces, where the first piece is dedicated to product presentation and action items, and second to product name, price and category. That way, not only product pictures are bigger, allowing for better presentation of a product, but also all the necessary information and actions are clear and accessible. Let's move to the next screen. Primary issue on the original design is around poor contrast and arrangement of space. Primary button has the same color as the background. Space for the product presentation is artificially limited. There is a problem with visibility of read more and there are issues with the size of the UI elements. I changed the background color for something that provides better readability and allow the whole top area to host a product photo. Then I created separated sections for different options by increasing the distances between them and by providing clear titles. And finally, I fixed the sizes of UI elements across the screen. Let's go to the next screen, or actually, screens. As you can see, we have two of them that are essentially showcasing the same thing. Although one I expect is serving as a purchase summary and second as a shop card. What you can see right away is that even though their purpose is similar, there are clear inconsistencies between them. Sizes and shapes of the call to action buttons are different, alignment of the product photos is different, and there are some small differences between product cards. That's one of the typical things that beginner designers struggle with. When you work on your 
our mobile app project, please make sure that the elements are the same shape, size and positions across all of your screens. Anyway, I don't think there is a need for two screens that are so similar, so I will combine them into one. I'm following the patterns established on the previous screens, in terms of color, sizes, distances and presentation. Apart from that, I'm allowing for better accessibility to increased size of the actionable buttons. And I'm making sure that the math presented on the design actually checks out. If you like this type of content, you can watch other videos from the before and after series here.